Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. A couple days ago during spotlight hour, I caught this shiny Togedomaru that I was so excited about. It was already 1486 CP in the wild, so I didn't need to power it up at all. All I had to do was put a second move on it and it was ready to go. Also, it had really good Great League IVs. So as soon as I got back home, I opened Fantasy Cup, I built a team around Togedomaru, and I tried it out. First set I played, I got a 5-0. And this might be my favorite 5-0 ever, and it might be just because I got to play with the shiny cutie that I caught literally a couple hours ago, but I just, I just really enjoyed using this thing. And I would highly recommend that you guys use it as well. Now, I am going to be showing you guys two different teams that I used in the Fantasy Cup with Togedomaru. So the first team does involve Giratina Origin, but if you don't have access to one, don't worry. The second team I use will not have Giratina Origin. Basically, if you're going to play Togedomaru in the Fantasy Cup, you need to pair it with something that is going to take care of fighters, Giratina, uh, opposing Flygons. So... Fairies are really good with Togedomaru because Togedomaru will be able to take care of most of the steel types like Skarmory and Bullion. Togedomaru will also be able to take care of Azu, so it's good to pair up with Dragon types. The first team we're going to take a look at is the team I got the 5-0 with. It is going to be Togedomaru lead with Giratina Origin on the safe swap and Shadow Flygon in the back. Togedomaru is going to do such a great job taking care of those fairy types, especially since I'm running it with Gyro Ball. I also like Gyro Ball for opposing Flygons. You'll see in this video, I do manage to land a couple of them on some unsuspecting Flygons. Now, if I do lose lead to a Flygon, I will swap into my Giratina and I can take a Dragon Claw from the Flygon. In most instances, they'll throw that Dragon Claw and then they'll swap out, but I don't want to use any shields. I will try to save my shields for Togedomaru and Flygon with shields up I should be able to win against almost anything. Anyways, that's enough rambling from me. Let's get into these battles. I have some really good ones for you guys today. Up first, we are going to see a Shadow Empoleon on the lead, which is amazing for my Togedomaru. But my opponent swaps into a Gudra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for that Gyro Ball, weaken the Gudra, and then I can bring in my Giratina and farm this thing down completely. I do not have to shield anything from Gudra because all of its charge moves are going to be resisted. We farm that Gudra down. Now we have energy for the Empoleon. If my opponent decides to bring that Empoleon back in, I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball and my opponent lets it go. I was expecting them to shield, but they let it go. They are in farm down range for Flygon, so I bring Flygon in and my opponent's final Pokemon is going to be their own Giratina Origin. This is so over for them. I just need to land one Dragon Claw on this Giratina. I'm going to go ahead and shield here. I have two shields left, so I can safely shield anything. And I will be able to make it to that Dragon Claw. And I think it was a CMP tie there. We'll see. They live in the red, but I decide to let Flygon go. I'm going to come in with Togedomaru, and I am going to farm that Giratina Origin down. But they, they swap into Empoleon, but at this point, there is nothing they can, they can do. I go for a wild charge here just for fun. <laughs> I definitely didn't need to do that. I could have just farmed them down, but I was just really, I was really excited to use Togedomaru. Okay, let, let me throw my wild charge. Moving on to the next battle. Oh boy, here we go. Shadow Flygon lead. I'm going to swap immediately into my Giratina. I can't bring in my own Flygon because I will be one fast move behind and I will lose that. I bring in Giratina and I let the Dragon Claw go. But my opponent swaps into a Skarmory and they take a Shadow Ball. And now I'm thinking I can bring Togedomaru in and go for a full farm down on the Skarmory. And hopefully my opponent will let me land a Gyro Ball on their Flygon. I'm not going to invest any shields. Togedomaru is quadruple resisting these uh, flying type moves. Now I'm expecting my opponent to bring that Flygon back in. I'm gonna go for a Gyro Ball. Hopefully it lands. If it lands, it will do so much damage. It lands and now we can bring in our own Flygon. Go for a Scorching Sands here up against this Empoleon, which is going to be my opponent's final Pokemon. They let it go and then they top left because their Flygon was really low HP. GG's to the opponent. 
Moving on to the next battle. I am not sure I really like this because it kind of counters my entire backline and also I need to watch out for the superpowers with my Togedemaru, so I absolutely have to take care of this Dragonite with Togedemaru. I'm gonna go for a Wild Charge, I don't have Fell Stinger, and my opponent was probably calling that I was gonna go Fell Stinger, so they let it go. Thankfully, that Dragonite is out of the way because it was going to give me a really hard time. My opponent brings in a Lucario, and... I, I was contemplating saving my final shield for Flygon because a shield for Flygon is extremely valuable, but I need to get that Lucario out of the way. My opponent swaps into Empoleon and they shield the Shadow Ball that we throw. Now they are going to go for a Drill Pack, take our Giratina out, and let's see what I decide to do. I bring in Toga tomorrow because I have a Wall Charge ready. I'm going to go for a wall charge up against this Empoleon, take it out, and then I can bring in my Flygon, and their Lucario is going to be in Dragon Claw range. So I can throw that, take the Lucario out, and then take another win with this team. On to the next battle. Again, we are going to see that Shadow Flygon lead really bad for my Togedemaru, immediately swapping into my Giratina Origin. When I was running Azumarill lead, I was not seeing this many Flygon leads. I was seeing a bunch of Empoleon leads and a bunch of Giratina Origin leads. Of course, I don't want to see Giratina Origin when I'm running Togedemaru either, but but still, I was, I mean, I wasn't seeing this many Flygons. Anyways, my opponent threw that Dragon Claw and then they swapped into Azumarill. I'm able to land two Shadow Balls on this Azu and because it is very low HP, I decide to bring in my Flygon instead of Togedemaru to start getting an energy lead because Flygon with an energy lead against an opposing Flygon is going to be essential. You need that energy lead, especially since I know in this matchup, my opponent is going to go ahead and invest both shields. I'm going to invest both shields as well. Because I'm ahead by a little bit of energy, I should be able to land the Dragon Claw unless they catch it on a Registeel which they do, <laughs> unfortunate for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and farm up to another Dragon Claw and I bring in Togedemaru here and I just use it as a third shield to take this Focus Blast. I'm gonna farm up a lot of energy. I need to make it to that Dragon Claw before my opponent can get to theirs. I make it, we win CMP, surprisingly. I should have farmed up a little bit more, but at least we win CMP. We're able to throw that Dragon Claw on their Flygon take their Flygon out, and then take that win. And that is going to be a 5-0 carrying us into the 2900s. This is my season high, by the way. And we are super close to Legend. I was really hoping that I could reach Legend with Toge tomorrow, but we end up dropping just a little bit. It's fine. It's still in range. But I was trying a few teams with Lucario. I, I just couldn't make Lucario work. But anyways, we are back to using this team, and I will switch up the team in a little bit. But moving on to the next match, we get a really nice lead of Skarmory into our Togedemaru. Our opponent manages to catch a Wild Charge on their Giratina, but I'm fine with that because that means I am going to be able to chip the Giratina, and now one Dragon Claw from Flygon is definitely going to KO. My opponent invests both shields into their Giratina and I'm still able to reach that third Dragon Claw before they can throw another move on my Flygon. So I have one shield left, my opponent has none, and their final Pokemon is going to be Empoleon. Togedemaru is going to go on an absolute rampage. I bring in my Giratina Origin up against this Empoleon just because the Drill Packs don't hurt that much and uh, the Hydra Cannons are going to be resisted. But an Ominous Wind is enough to take that Empoleon out. I'm going to be able to throw a Shadow Ball on the Skarmory and my opponent. It looks like they uh, gave up there because I had a really healthy to Togedemaru left and I was going to be able to take that win. Now I don't know why here specifically I decided to switch up the team because I was, I was winning with the team that had Giratina on it. But I remembered in my last video, I said that the best lead was Azu. It was winning leads up against most of the leads that I was going to see. And also, I think in previous sets, I had seen some uh, Giratina leads and I was really afraid of getting those. So I end up putting Azu on the lead. I'm running Ice Beam on it so that I can throw those faster up against Giratinas if I see them. 
And the reason I decided to run this lineup, which is As We Leave with Togi Tomorrow and Flygon, is because I was seeing a lot of that Giratina double seal backline, which I was struggling quite a bit against with my previous team. So yes, I switch it up and of course the first lead I see, my Togi Tomorrow would have been really good against, but I stay in with my Azu, my opponent swaps into a Shadow Skarmory. I have my Togi Tomorrow, I'm gonna bring it in up against the Shadow Skarmory and because they debuff themselves, I was able to go for a Gyro Ball, take the Skarmory out. My opponent goes for an Ice Beam with their Azu and I'm able to make it to a wall charge. This is why I didn't want to debuff myself. I would not have left that Ice Beam and gotten that wall charge off and taken my opponent's shield. But my opponent's final Pokemon is going to be a Shadow Empoleon. I'm going to bring in my Flygon and I thought I might have to double shield Flygon here, but they let the Scorching Sands go and they bring that Azu back in. But I am going to shield my Flygon because I really need to weaken this uh, Azu before bringing my own Azu in. I'm going to go for a Scorching Sands here and they actually let it go. GG to the opponent. I was going to be able to win that with my own Azu, so they go ahead and they top left. Moving on to the next battle, we are going to see a really nice lead of Haxorus and my opponent swaps into a Skarmory. Of course, Togedemaru is the absolute counter to Skarmory. Gonna bring it in, take this Brave Bird, which barely does any damage. And I thought here I might be able to go for a Gyro Ball and take the Skarmory out because they're debuffed, but I was very wrong. And I'm gonna let whatever this is go. They just go for a Sky Attack, so we're able to farm them down. And this might be good for me because the Haxorus now is not going to get that much energy from my Togedemaru. I'm gonna be able to land a Wild Charge anyways. But my opponent actually decides to shield that. I still have alignment so I can bring Ezu into the Haxorus, but they have a Ferrothorn left. Okay, this is going to get a little bit tricky because Ferrothorn is a little bit of a core breaker for this team. I'll tell you what the ultimate core breaker for this team is in a little bit. You'll see what it is. But I am able to land a Scorching Sands on the Ferrothorn. It's almost dead, so my opponent goes ahead and top left because that Haxorus was not going to be able to deal with my Azu. On to the next battle, we're going to see another Shadow Flag on lead, but this time we have the Azumarill on the lead, so this is exactly where we want it. Our opponent is going to go for a Scorching Sands, and usually they will wait for me to throw one more bubble, and then they'll try to catch a move on a Pokemon that they have in the back. They bring in their own Azumarill, probably trying to catch a play rough, but I save all that energy and I swap into my Togedemaru. Now I do go for a wild charge and we debuff ourselves, but the play rough from my opponent is still not enough to take us out. And I I was expecting if it did take my uh, Togi Tomorrow out, I would be okay with it because then I can come in with my Flygon and farm their Azumarill down because I need to be ahead by a little bit of energy on my Flygon if I'm going to take care of their Flygon with my Flygon. Now my opponent's final Pokemon is going to be an Empoleon and they let the Scorching Sands go, one-shotting that Empoleon. Now they only have this Flygon left. I'm going to go ahead and shield because I need to try to get their shields out of the way. Even, even if I get the shields out of the way, I think it is going to come down to a farm down with my Azu. So hopefully I can get it low enough with the Mud Shots. I'm going to go for another Dragon Claw here. This should take my opponent's final shield. And then I swap into my Azu, and yes, I do make it to the Ice Beam, never mind. I was thinking of another game where I end up farming my opponent down with the bubbles. The GG's to our opponent, we are going to take another win. On to the next match, the lead we are going to see is going to be Azumarill. I like to lose this lead, soft lose this lead, because then I can come in with my Flygon and start getting energy on Flygon. And a lot of times my opponent is going to have their own Flygon in the back. So if I could get an energy lead on my Flygon, I will be in a good position. Now, we're, I think we're just going to stay in here. And I haven't CMP tied with my opponent yet, so I don't know who wins CMP and who loses CMP. I think we will end up CMP tying on the next move. I win CMP, but my opponent survives with 1 HP. I am perfectly fine with this. I'm going to let Azumarill go here and then I will bring in Flygon and farm their Azu down. Okay, I'm ahead by one, one Mudshot that is 
good for me. But my opponent has a Lucario in the back and it is running Forest Palm and Forest Palm really hurts Flygon. I'm going to go for a Scorching Sands here. Hopefully my opponent calls a Dragon Claw. They let it go and their final Pokemon is going to be their own Flygon. But here's the problem. My opponent has two shields left and I used a shield on that Thunder Punch from Lucario. So I'm in a really tricky situation. I know that after I throw this Dragon Claw, my opponent is going to be at the Dragon Claw. So I swap into my Togedemaru, hoping to catch a, a Dragon Claw on Togedemaru. And if I did that successfully, I would have been able to reach the Gyro Ball before my opponent could reach a Scorching Sands. But it doesn't work out that way. They're able to take our Togedemaru out and they had enough energy for a Dragon Claw against our Flygon. They take that win, GG's to our opponent, but that is still a 4-1 in that set. Moving on to the next battle, we are going to be met with a Shadow Alolan Sandslash on the lead. And this is a little bit of a core breaker for my team because I don't really have a solid answer to this. So I'm staying in with Azumarill. I was trying to fake a Hydro Pump, but my opponent catches the play rough on their Azu. Now I farm up a little bit of energy before swapping into Togedemaru and I make a huge mistake here. I was really hoping my opponent would be running Ice Beam and Play Rough, but I should have known better. The recommended moveset in Fantasy Cup for Azumarill is Play Rough and Hydro Pump. I'm not running the recommended moveset, doesn't mean others aren't, so yeah. Bye bye Togedemaru. We managed to throw only one Wild Charge on the Azu. They shield it, of course, and now I am going to bring my own Azu in against this Azu. But here's the problem. My opponent left with a ton of energy on the Alolan Sand Slash. They are easily going to be able to reach two Ice Punches now up against our Flygon, and we're just going to lose this. I'm going to go for a Dragon Claw here, but even, even if I bait, I'm not going to be able to make it to another move because my opponent is already at the Ice Punch. They're going to take our Flygon out, and... We're just going to get destroyed in that game. Now, before I move on to the next battle, let me tell you guys a little bit of a backstory. About 30 minutes earlier, I ran into a streamer. You guys might know him. His name's Pokegains. And he was running a Pokemon that absolutely destroyed my entire team. He was running a Shadow Alolan Executor. And I was still running the team with Togedemaru lead with Giratina and Flygon in the back. And... I don't have Fell Stinger on my Togedemaru, so it was impossible to deal with that Alolan Executor. I don't have that set recorded, but I was able to take the game from his Twitch stream, so it is going to be from his perspective. Sorry, Pokegains, I hope you're okay with me taking this uh, this footage. It's just my battle. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I would show you guys that first before showing you the next battle in the set because I run into him again. So we'll see that battle first. Also, I don't want to hear anyone saying, oh, she doesn't show her losses. I am showing you guys me getting destroyed. Okay? Okay, let's watch the battle. So we lead Togedemaru into his Shadow Magnezone, and I have two better answers to Shadow Magnezone in the back. So I'm going to throw a Wild Charge, and then I will swap into my Giratina. Well, he brings in that Shadow Alolan Executor. Of course, it is running Dragon Tail, and it absolutely melts Giratina. He now has a lot of energy on this thing because he completely farmed my Giratina down. And at this point, I had given up. I was not going to shield anything on Togedemaru. He goes for a Draco Meteor. And even now, his attack is debuffed because he went for that Draco Meteor. And he is still going to melt my Flygon. I, I decided to shield only because I know I'm going to lose this. But I wanted to see what his third Pokemon was. But uh, I don't... I don't think, oh, I will get to see it because I'm going to mud shot this uh, Magnezone down here and then I'm going to get to see that Flygon. I didn't even go for the Dragon Claw. I didn't even bother to CMP tie on the Dragon Claw because I know it's not going to be enough to take it out. But yeah, we get absolutely destroyed by that stupid tree. And guess what? I'm going to have to deal with it again because I run into him again in the same evening within a span of, I swear it was just like 30 minutes to one hour. I queue up into the same trainer, and of course he has the same Pokemon. The Magnezone is going to destroy my lead. I just swap into Flygon. At this point, I was contemplating just top-lefting, 
but he lets the dragon claw go on the Alolan Executor. Thank goodness that thing was coming for my soul. I, I was gonna see Alolan Executor in my nightmares. He has a Gudra at the back. It looks like he swapped off that Flygon and I am going to bring in my Azumarill against this Gudra. Now I'm thinking I will take both shields from my opponent here and then I can swap into Togedemaru. I'm gonna try to catch a Thunder Punch on Togedemaru. We managed to make the catch. Okay, that's really good. But I have to save both shields for Magnezone because that Magnezone is absolutely loaded. It didn't throw a single move when I swapped out. He goes for an Aqua Tail. We let it go. Brings in that Magnezone. I'm going to go ahead and invest both of my shields here. I want to farm up to two Wild Charges before I take this Magnezone out. Now I am going to be able to go for this Wild Charge. It will be enough to KO and... I should hopefully be able to reach a Gyro Ball up against this Gudra. It is going to absolutely hurt. And now I can come in with my Azu. I have enough for an Ice Beam and I'm gonna be able to take that win. That was, that would have been impossible if he shielded that Alolan Executor. But yeah, we, we managed to win against, oh my God, that tree. I, I, I do not want to see that tree anymore. By the way, I run into him the next evening as well and I get absolutely destroyed, <laughs> okay? Okay, we're, we're just not gonna talk about that though. Anyways, moving on to the next battle, we are going to see a terrible lead of Registeel. I'm just gonna swap into Togeta Maru, and I draw out an Alolan Sand Slash running Powder Snow. Okay, this is good for me. I can make it to two wild charges up against this thing, and I'm thinking, let's see if they let it go. They let it go, so I might be able to double shield my Togi Tomaru and farm this Alolan Sand Slash down. Now, we are two shields down, which is not great for my Flygon, but I have a feeling my opponent is going to have another answer to Flygon in the back, so I'm going to throw two Wild Charges here, and then I'm going to save my Togi Tomaru. I'm calling that my opponent has a Fairy-type in the back. So I swap into Azu, I take the Zap Cannon. I was really hoping I would take a Focus Blast, but I couldn't catch it. And my opponent's final Pokemon is going to be Weakly Tough. This is not looking good for me. My opponent has two shields left. Even if I brought Togedemaru in, I was not gonna be able to land a single move. They are gonna be able to charm us down. I brought in Flygon to take the Icy Wind for some reason. I'm gonna go for a Wild Charge here, but you know what that means. That is going to debuff us, and now the charms are going to hit like super effective. So they're gonna take that win. GG's to the opponent, unfortunate for us. Moving on to the final battle of the video. I hope you guys have been enjoying this one. We are going to see a Flygon on the lead. This is a really good lead for me. I am going to watch out for a potential catch, so I'm going to take this first Scorching Sands and then I will farm up a little bit of extra just in case my opponent tries to catch. I throw on bad timing so that my opponent doesn't catch. That's why I did two bubbles and then I threw. Okay, I learned that if you throw on good timing, your opponent will be able to anticipate when to catch. If you throw on bad timing, they won't anticipate it so <laughs> I throw the ice beam on bad timing twice here on purpose and my opponent manages to catch the next one on their Azu. As much as I tried they still managed to catch a move from me but they are two shields down and this is going to be so good for me. I am going to be able to take the Flygon out with a gyro ball so what I'm going to do is I farm up to max energy before throwing my wild charge. My opponent survives with one HP but it is enough for us to farm them down and leave with a gyro ball ready and loaded for the Flygon. I tap it immediately. Of course, they're going to win CMP, but I'm okay with investing that shield. That means the Flygon will be out of the way and I still have a shield left. My opponent's final Pokemon is going to be that Shadow Alolan Sand Slash, but I am not gonna let them land an Ice Punch. Gonna go for that Scorching Sands. It is gonna be enough to KO the Shadow Alolan Sand Slash and give us the third win in the set so that we can go positive. Oh wait, there's one more. Never mind. <laughs> My bad. I thought that that was the last battle. Moving on to the final, final battle. Our opponent leads Giratina into her Azu. Not a, not a great lead, but also not the worst. I am going to go for the Ice Beam as soon as I get it because my opponent is always going to assume that I'm going to go for a play rough. So 
we manage to take a shield from our opponent. They go for a shadow ball. I'm not going to shield anything, but I am going to go for that ice beam as soon as I get it again. My opponent lets it land this time. Okay, I'm going to let Azu go here and I think I'm going to come in and farm down with Flygon. I'm going to have to invest a shield though. So, oh no, no. I bring Togedumaru and I decide, oh, okay, let me tell you why. I'm assuming my opponent is going to have double steel in the back because I have been seeing Giratina double steel all evening. So I brought in Togedumaru to attempt to farm that Giratina down. Of course, my opponent is not going to let me do that. They swap out into their Empoleon, but I mean, there's not much they can do. We know that their third Pokemon is going to be that Skarmory and they go ahead and they top left. Now that is the win that is going to give us the 3-2 in that set by bad guys. I messed up before. But anyways, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like my content, please consider subscribing. Maybe leave a like. It helps me out so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.